Graham, from uh, the time you started this project, which was what, in um, three years ago? <laughs> what, the book? When you first started writing chapters before you even... Oh, look, it would have been five years ago. Yep. I, I, I threw, threw some words down and decided that, um, you know, I wanted to put my life down in, in yep. a story, but it was a whole sequence of little bits that were all over the place, so I didn't really get too, um, too, too compl complicated. Yeah, the thing was that you had... You had a big chunk of it already done, it seemed to me, that were like in, in, pari uh, in chapters. Yes. Just a case of organising them in, 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 in yeah. the chronological yeah. order. Yeah. Um, obviously, you over, de over um, delivered in terms of the, the word count. I, it was, <laughs> well, they had to do a fair bit of trimming. Well, they, they called the contract. Words, yeah, well, the contract called for 100,000 words, between 80 and 100,000 yeah. words. And I, and I started and I realised that. I'm going to go over that a little bit, mm -hmm. but I didn't realise I'd ended up with 187,000. Yeah. So we pulled it back to 150, which is um, which is what we've got here at the moment. Yeah. So it's, it's any bigger, it would have gone into the next price bracket. Yeah, and all yeah. Sorts of stuff. Because the so cost of production and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and you don't want to put it in too fine a print because the older guys can't read it. That did right. <laughs> I, I can promise you, there's more than four words on each page. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and the other thing is, I've also been able to, I guess, bank. That extra thirty or forty thousand that we've mm. put aside, so that might be a the outtakes, as it were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Crosby yeah. Chronicles Part Two. Yeah, well, it's all full of <laughs> and things like that, anyway. So surely not. Oh yes, <laughs> I, can't, I find that very hard to believe. <laughs> all the juicy I mean, bits. The, the um, were there any particular parts when you were writing it that you found um, recalled very, you know, funny memories that made you actually laugh when you were writing it? Yeah, it, it, the difficulty is that if you are trying to retrack or retrace what you've mm. done and pick out a piece that's humorous, um, and try and put it into into words, yeah. it's actually it's actually tricky to do yeah. to try and get that feel. And I think I've achieved it in a couple there, but I think perhaps the the bold door was probably one. I, I mean, I could have written a whole book just I'm on just the bold on that door. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. There's so many of the antics that happened yes. and, and and the um, all those little silly little things. You yeah, know, but. At the end of the day, you have to pull it back and, and squeeze it into yeah. something that's um, that's readable. Well, that, that, I mean, the thing with the bold door part for me was was really interesting because I remember when I got to Australia, probably a year after you'd done the first you'd done your first bowl, and I'd heard a bit bits about it from Brian Cowan, yeah, who had it reported from Ross and Ralph and various other people, and he'd seen the um, the French magazines, you know. <laughs> um, I think Motor Journal had this thing, and they showed the spectators with a with a blank, uh, not a blank, a sheet. That they'd yeah. written something on, like the Lay Le, Le Kangaroos no, Trey, Trey Crazy or something. Uh, Trey, Trey Kangaroos Les Rapide or something like that. Oh, yeah, that. yeah. Some, something like that, yeah. Because yeah, it was, um, it was, I mean, when I, and then I did, um, it was only, you know, recently when we got, you know, you got the photograph from the French guy showing the, um, the bike, and it actually didn't look too bad. I mean, it was, you said the big headlights and stuff on it, which <laughs> wasn't the best from the aerodynamic well, I, point I'd, of view. I'd but forgotten that whole Boldor race that we took the bike across to. We entered it in, in under a silhouette class, yeah. which enabled you to use a standard looking bike yeah. um, and put some headlights on and yeah. tail lights and, and, mm. and away you go. So that was what the class that we ran it in. Um, yeah. So using the type of bike, you know, we were always going to be down the back of the field. Yeah, sure. Um, no, the theory, no, the theory yeah, was. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the no, theory was. no slim, uh, fairing or anything Yeah, like. so uh, it wasn't until we actually sorted out the Ferrari fuel and actually got it to, to run more than two laps without seizing. Yeah. Um, that was when we suddenly realised we had enough power to actually be at the front. Be at the front too. Mm. Um, so that was kind of a, was kind of an exciting thing for a number of reasons. You know, the, just the, just the fact of being completely different. Yeah. And that's kind of worked worked for us all the way through. Yeah. And I think the, the thing is the French psyche they like that they like that kind of thing too, don't they? I mean, oh, they, yeah, yeah. they would yeah, have they seen yeah. all their. Um, the factory built um, bikes like the Hondas, but yeah. as well as that, you had some very strong um, French teams that were running endurance racing at the time with yeah. with prototype bikes. With, yep. uh, the you Leverda, know, the body the, yeah, the yeah. and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So here you are in, in amongst that company on it. What to the, the average guy on the street looked like a Z1 with a 401 on it yeah. with a big set of headlights. Well, that's probably what it was, Mike. Well, it had a bit more <laughs> power than a standard Z1, that's for sure. And but that's, better, that, that, yeah. was, that, was the, that was the difficulty in trying to push all that into in, yeah. into into a couple of chapters yeah um, and other ones you've got to be a little bit careful of you know you can be rude but not yeah. too rude um, so pulling all that together it was was actually a bit of fun doing mm. it and, and it's not until you actually go back and read it yourself and it's quite surprising how much you little how little you actually read after yeah. you've written it yeah you know you go right I've done I don't need to read yeah, it yeah. you think 
I've, you know, I, I can remember it all, but you know, I've, I've had a couple of reads at, yeah. uh, again now, and I, I, I find it. You know, now, I think yeah. one of the bits is probably left out was it the at Daytona when you're riding for Suzuki and and Randy was riding for Suzuki and there was a um, turn one incident and he. he Ended up coming off the worst for it and made some statement that you'd brought him down. But yeah, no, I covered that in the yeah, book. Oh, you did, yeah. No. Yeah, it was. Um, there was a photograph with the back of your bike with a big piece off the tail section, and, and unless you'd backed into him, I mean, we couldn't figure out how he could have made that claim. But it, Well, you've got to remember that, you know, Suzuki had put a lot of effort into into getting that RG500 or whatever yeah. it was, XR35, 6 yeah. or whatever it is. It was a big engine for a start because mm. they were running For it Daytona, in, yeah. yeah. Um, and Randy crashed it in practice, mm-hmm. and then in the race um, he only got, I, I think some journo worked it out about 70 metres or something like that. So you divide your 70 by your 400 odd thousand dollars for the event. <laughs> by by dollars per millimetre. It was a very, very expensive thing. So when he did crash, you know, and, and he crashed into me, um, he came up underneath me as, as I was accelerating out of the corner. He was still coming around, just ran wide and ran into me. So I didn't have a problem with that, but what I did have a problem with was when uh, when I came back in that um, you know Randy had told everybody that I deliberately ran, mm. ran him over and, and 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 I thought that was a bit strange, and especially coming from Jim Doyle. Well, you know that was a, mm. a bit over the top, so um, I, I, I quickly told him what well, the story I was. I could understand Jim Doyle, Randy's manager, making that claim, but I was a bit surprised that Randy was actually saying it as well. Yeah, I, 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 me too. I mean, I, I I know exactly what happened, and I didn't mm. I didn't. I, I didn't cause the accident, mm. and um, no, I think most of the American press saw the damage on the bike and saw what yeah, happened, and they yeah. figured, well, you know, it didn't, yeah. it didn't, it didn't stack up. No, no, no. But that was that was one of the incidences. There's, there's quite a lot of. Um, but I, I think that probably does highlight just how much tension there was within the team, and also, as you say, the Suzuki put a lot of effort into that bike, and he, and, and so Randy's, it, he's the the sort of leader, so there was a lot of pressure on him. Oh and yeah. So yeah. you know. That's, that's what happens sometimes, isn't it? Well, it, it, it is. Like it, tennis players throwing their rackets down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah toys out of a cot and <laughs> things like that. But, you know, with me being effectively removed out of Suzuki at the end of 1981, mm. uh, my move to Yamaha, I was still hurting a little bit on mm. that one. So, yeah. so any time I had an opportunity to stick it into them, I would do. <laughs> In fact, the best thing I, I thought was the fact that we rode our new um, YZR 500 or the mm. OW60. We rode that um, in Misano, and it was so slow. It was like four seconds lap slower than I'd been the year before on the mm. Suzuki. We then had to change all the head angles and, and change a whole heap of stuff to the bike. And Radar, radar yeah, um, Dave, yeah, he's Dave right Cullen, here. Who's, who's here at the moment, he, he um, him and um, Trevor Tilbury took the bike away, and we effectively converted it back to, to Suzuki Geometry, Suzuki geometry. Mm. and then I went back to that same circuit again and I was another second a lap quicker. Then you had been it, on yeah, Suzuki. Yeah, so I knew I was in the right. Yeah, yeah. In the, in, and that was probably one of the best bikes I've ever ridden. Yeah, that, yes, was, yes. I mean, I, I remember you telling us about this um, back at, at that time, and um, you told this delightful story about how, I think it was Mark Fontan, um, also had one of those OW60s, Square 4 500cc two-stroke Yamaha, and Kenny Roberts had done the um, the initial testing and stuff on it, and, and Yamaha had set the geometry on what Kenny liked, and you tested it, I think, at Iwata. Yeah. And and um, you said to me it felt like it was going to crash every corner you went round. Yeah. And Barry Sheen had had the same um, sensation, and he went to England, and I think Kent, the late the late just Ken Fletcher mm-hmm. did the same thing independently. Yeah. Is what Radar and Trevor did to yours. Yeah. And so you went racing the first Grand Prix, and I think that was Argentina, and it's, yeah. I think it seized or something there. Well, it seized because because we had no. This is this is what this is the whole thing about motor motorcycle racing, particularly Grand Prix racing. When you get to that level, mm. there, there's a certain expectation that you know when you mix up your fuel and, and you get it all right, because it's not it's 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 not science, but it's very very close to being science. You know, you've got to know your volumes of yep. fuel to oil ratios. Mm. And, and, you're, and you're jetting and all yeah. the other bits and pieces and which controls controls t- temperature mission, and yeah. detonation all that all that sort of stuff well that that's all worked out mm. finitely mm. Um, but when you turn up the next day which we did for the actual race and went looking for our race fuel one of the mechanics had just filled up Ago's uh, rental car and of course that oh, was the only fuel move. we had so we had then to find some other fuel of unknown quality, quality. yes um, 
and mix it with fuel that uh, you know, the oil, which we don't mm. know how it was all going to mm. go together, and, and and it didn't unfortunately. We yeah. did about five laps, and the thing just mm. blew itself to bits. So I, we sat there afterwards and saying, well, why why did it blow itself to bits? And a simple reason is the boss used all the bloody race fuel, and you can't you can't argue with that. No. So you've got to start wondering to yourself who the, you know. Who's, who's driving the ship? <laughs> yes, <laughs> and indeed. It just, so. And it just got worse and worse yes. and worse as the year as the year went through. Yeah. I mean, we all know how good uh, young Rossi is. Yeah, I was in the same team as his, his, his father. Dad, yeah, and Graziano. We um, we put the the last well the last Grand Prix I think Great Radar prepared both bikes. Mm -hmm. One of them to do the actual race, another one to do practice. But both of them were virtually going to be time expired by the time the, the race was finished, the way we'd worked out the kilometres mm. and all that. Well, we turned up at um, Hockenheim, opened the back of the truck, and there were two two motorbikes. And I'm thinking, well, it should have been four for a start. Um, Graziano's two and, and our two, well, our two, well, my two. One of them was in a million bits, and the other was looking decidedly second-hand. And, and we, well, two weeks ago, we'd actually prepared these for racing. And we figured, figured out, and we asked, and sure enough, the, the team had decided to give the two Grand Prix bikes to Graziano Rossi to do a race in Sicily, and he crashed, and he crashed one of them and used the other bike. So we ended up with zero kilometres available on the on the engine. So we just had to go in the last race. That, and that was was that at Spa? I, I no, 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 okay. Hockenheim, Hockenheim. I remember there was a case. I think Jim Scaisbrook wrote about it in the column we used to run in the magazine Australia, how uh, Radar was building this engine at Spa from a whole lot of used parts. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, he mentioned uh, that Graziano was getting some favoured treatment, but I thought that 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 Rossi rode a TZ. Yeah, there was to no. Start with. Yeah, it wasn't was, a square four. No, was no, it? he never it was raced. Four. Never, never raced the, the the square four. Except that time in Sicily. <laughs> yeah, or oh, and another one too, which, <laughs> which we found out about later. Um, but that, but I mean, that's that's yeah. that's how the Italians do it. You know, yeah. if you can if you can deal with them, that's fine. Mm. Of course, a lot of. A lot of this, what we're just talking about, is in here, um, and it's mentioned uh, in a bit more detail. Mm. Um, so, how do people go about buying it? I mean, it's in the. It's in you the, stick um, your hand in your pocket and you pull out your bloody money. Good, good, <laughs> good answer. Um, so, and it's still it's still in the in the um, bookshops and new days. Yeah, you should things. be able to get it in all the all the normal bookshops. Yeah. Um, and if not, you can go onto my website, GrahamCrosby.com. And you can purchase it over over the, and they're all signed copies, by the way. Oh, so, okay, you get a signed so copy. Yeah, that's the only way I can get a margin out of it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a lot of work, and and um, you know it's a costly thing to do. Yes. So, and and luckily, I, I think at this stage we've pretty much run out of the first print run of um, six thousand. So we're looking at doing a reprint. Well, it was one of these that you hit, you start what to about, pick off. What about the tits? Crashing on, What about the tits on page one four four? I didn't notice. Look at that. Oh yes, yes. No, I always thought she was a bit on the anemic side, that young lady. Tits. <laughs> it's Oops. not a page. It's not a page three. Here I am holding it, pointing to my daughter sitting over there. <laughs> oh, well, she's so whatever. I, yeah, that that was a great photo shoot that, that uh, you did with Vic Barnes, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah. So there's plenty of plenty of anecdotal stuff there. There's lots mm. of images to look at, and from what I understand and what the feedback I've got is that it's. Um, it's a book that a lot of people who don't normally read books actually got into it yeah. and actually read it, and that's really it's really good from a author's point of view to to feel mm. like you've, you know you've put yeah. something out there and somebody's saying well yeah it's good it's good to read yeah well I, I thought it was I mean I, I sat down and started reading it I think uh, and my wife said Are you going to go to bed tonight I said oh I'll see how I go you know and I think about three oh you've, you've actually read it yeah yeah and then, oh, and good, then I finished good. it off the next day you know oh, so it was done. So Dave's giving us a wind-up sign now. We've probably burnt through his battery and all his video <laughs> tape and everything else. So good. So uh, yeah, thanks for that, Graham. It was uh, great pleasure. Sure.